Hello everyone. Welcome back to the You Can Do TV. Have you ever wondered about the process of selecting and raising fingerlings according to the cloning process? In this video, we will learn about the breeding and care of fry. First we should know about the role of breeding and rearing fish by the cloning process. Cloning helps bring endangered fish back to the world, in addition to increasing the number of species, ensuring growth rate, fish weight, harvest time, reducing feed costs and prevention. Disease control, increase economic efficiency for aquaculture farmers. Special types of fish raised by the cloning process include catfish, salmon, crocodile, paddlefish, arapaima. Wyoming Game and Fish Department is one of the farms with a high-quality fish cloning process. They perform cloning to save endangered animals, in an effort to stop the decline and grow their numbers. Below we will learn about the cloning process. Firstly, the rainbow trout will be reared and selected parental and quality standards for cloning. Eggs from the mother fish are swiped out by hand or sloped down to flow on their own. Each female fish can produce 700 to 4,000 eggs per year depending on the age of the fish. Eggs are collected in pots, kept dry to wait for fertilization. After that, the sperm of the male fish will be swiped by hand into the egg pot. It is common to use the sperm of two to three males to fertilize one female to minimize the inbreeding effect. After fertilization, water is added to activate the sperm and they put into large tubs, it helps the eggshell harden. After that, eggs are placed into an iodine to kill bacteria and prevent disease transmission between individuals. Then the number of eggs is measured in a von Bayer trough. The eggs are then placed in a covered tray and put into a drip incubator. Clean water continuously flows to these trays to keep the eggs warm and healthy while in the incubator. Bumping will be the way used to classify eggs, if the egg is weak or not fertilized in the process it will break the membranes inside and the egg will turn white. Then the broken eggs are then manually removed and the healthy eggs are delivered to the hatchery. The eggs will be placed in a tray wrapped with a wet towel and then gently placed on the tray for transport. The eggs will be shipped overnight to Wyoming hatcheries or other states such as Tennessee or New Jersey. When the eggs start to hatch, they all have a yolk in their belly to provide them with nutrition. The fry are usually not very active but just lie on the bottom.
The fry start swimming to the surface to find food and grow to the size of a finger. They are immature and are called fingerling fish. Then it becomes round and bigger. There will be many adult fish that return to be parents to provide eggs for the cloning process. All fish in the tank will be harvested with Sanan nets and loaded into trailers with glass tanks, small tanks that can hold about 300 gallons of water. In the middle of the aquarium there is an air rock to provide oxygen to the fish and is insulated to keep the water cool. The large stocking truck can hold about 1,000 gallons of water that hold about 2,300 pounds or 7,809 rainbow trout. After transporting the fish to the lake, the driver will unplug the fish and let the fish run to new accommodation. Fish stocking is a way to release artificially raised fish to create a natural environment. In addition, breeding and caring for crocodiles is also an extremely interesting job. Crocodile meat has many uses such as treating skin diseases, developing muscles, preventing cardiovascular diseases, so raising crocodiles for commercial use is also a growing industry and below will describe the process of raising and hatching crocodiles. Eggs of crocodiles will be collected in the morning within 24 hours after laying and are collected in grass bags. Grass will surround the eggs to prevent the eggs from breaking during movement and to stabilize their temperature. Their number is recorded on the bag and then brought into a room at the right temperature for them to hatch. The temperature in the room will always be maintained at 35 degrees Celsius and humidity 60% so that the eggs can be incubated. Eggs are placed in a basket to be incubated and hatched into offspring and then released into the environment. Baby crocodiles will live in clean water and be fed to grow up. After maturity, crocodiles will come to the dry environment to bask in the sun.
After growing, crocodiles will be taken away to make industrial products for commercial purposes such as taking their skin to make bags and taking their meat for food.